This is the first Sunday after Christmas. All the presents have been opened, and most of the visitors have gone home. For some, the tree is already put away, and most of the decorations are put away. We're just now beginning to settle back into our monthly routine that Christmas is over. But let's not kid ourselves. Lent is just around the corner. <laughs> but before we rush away from the celebration of the birth of our Lord, we really need to remain, to remain in the moment for as long as we can. We need to take time to bask in this holy birth in his holy light. We need to stay focused on the gift that has been given to us. The gift of Christ is truly the gift that keeps on giving. And it is the only gift that is meant to be kept and to be regifted. In fact, when we receive this gift, it is mandatory for the recipient to regift it, to give baby Jesus, the Christ child, the adult Jesus, the crucified Jesus, the risen Jesus, and the ascended Jesus. You see, those are our gifts from God. Here at St. Gregory's, that is our theme, it is our life, and it is our message transforming hearts through the love of Jesus. Maybe said another way, transforming hearts through the gift and the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true gift of Christmas that keeps on giving. The reading from Isaiah this morning is filled with praises to God. The beginning of the first verse is an easy read at first glance but really something very deep for us to think about. Listen to these words anew and fresh this morning again. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and he has clothed me with the robe of righteousness. You see, our Christmas gifts from God have really been a whole new wardrobe to wear every day of our life. But, but, do we greatly rejoice in the Lord? And does our whole being exult in the Lord? Now, as we go through the days and the weeks and the months and things must get done, are we filled with praise to God? Well, I can confess to you, and I can honestly say, that is not always the case for me. I want to. God knows I try to. But it just doesn't happen every day. <coughs> Let me give you some examples that you can relate to. Like when I'm cleaning up the house after that one guest that comes for Christmas that you know they're going to make a mess. <laughs> you know the person in your family that I'm talking about. You got them. We all do. The one family member or visitor that within five minutes after arrival, the house looks like a hurricane just passed through. <laughs> that one holiday visitor that you know before they arrive, they're just going to leave you a mess. Or how about picking out the garbage? Do I go skipping to the trash can, exalting the Lord to the Lord, and singing what a person we have in Jesus? Or when I spill something on my sport jacket and stain it, because it seems as though I need a bib anymore when I eat dinner. All that is intentionally a little bit silly, but to prove a point. You see, we can focus on the task at hand. We can focus on the unexpected surprises that come our way. But do we really give the Lord the honor? And do we exalt him? It's not easy. Regardless of what the advertisers tell us, it's almost impossible for human beings to do more than one thing at a time and do it well. It seems the more things we try to do at the same time, 
the more mistakes we make. The psalmist tells us as well to be filled with praises to God. And he gives us ways in which God cares for his people. Listen to these words. How good it is to sing praises to our God. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up the wounds. He, God, provides food for his flocks and herds. And he satisfies you with the finest of wheat. In other words, God provides all that we need. The instruction is this. God gives us what we need. And we praise God for doing so. However, the psalm and Isaiah are both meant for the people of Israel. At the time they were written, we were not included, as the last line of the psalm says. He, God, has not done so to any other nation. To them, he has not revealed his judgments. Well, that was true. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. The gospel reading from John this morning is one of the most well-known pieces of scripture in the Bible. Almost everyone can quote the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But there is a great deal of meaning contained in those 17 more words. In the beginning, means the beginning of our creation. Not in the beginning of God, because God always was and always will be. Alpha and Omega. God has no beginning. God has no end. One of the most interesting pieces of John's Gospel is the use of the word, word. It's from the Greek, Logos. And let, let me read you a description of what that word means. Logos in Greek is a word for discourse or reason. In the second and third centuries of the Christian era, it became the name for the mind or the reason of God, which perfectly mirrors or expresses his being, and which was completely embodied in the baby Jesus of Nazareth. You see, God gives us what we need. We needed to be saved from ourselves. We needed to have our sins removed. We needed a plan of salvation. We needed eternal life. We needed to see the glory of God. You see, God gives us just what we need. The Word became flesh. Humans were essentially 2,000 years ago no different than today. Many were like St. Thomas, the doubting one, in that they needed to see, they needed to touch, they needed to do all of that in order to believe. Many did not believe because they couldn't accept the change to their way of life. Many did not believe because they thought they knew God's mind better than God. He, Jesus, was in the world, and yet the world did not know him. He, Jesus, came to the world on his own, and his people did not accept him. We have seen Jesus, and we believe in him. Now, we may not have seen Jesus of Nazareth, but we have seen the light of Christ, the whole theme of our Advent season. We have seen the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We have seen the eternal light that always was and always will be, we have not seen all of the light, but we have seen a glimmer of the light, a piece of it. We have seen enough of the light to get us through our earthly life and to lead us to that eternal life with our Lord above. That is why, for baptisms, we light that Christ candle, and often that we light the candle that we give the parents and we say, receive the light. To remind them and to remind us of his eternal light shining upon us. This is a glorious gift. The gift of the season, it reminds us of God embodied in Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. We hold
hold this baby today and forever. This gift is a part of our daily life, of our being, and our very existence. He holds us in his loving arms of mercy and grace. This is the greatest gift that ever was or ever will be. When you truly think of the magnitude of this gift, you cannot become it. It brings you to tears. When you think of our loved ones not here with us anymore, we are moved to know that in just a few minutes, they too will join us at this communion room in Holy Communion. Listen to the words of our liturgy. With angels, archangels, and the whole host of heaven. That includes our loved ones that have gone before. My friends, we should be so humbled and so honored that we almost get up and dance down the aisle to receive Holy Communion at this celebration. That the leaders of the past centuries are celebrating with us. We are humbled partly because it's impossible to fully comprehend and understand the magnitude of this gift. We can't decide to have fully grasp it, but grasp the Christ child. We can receive that gift of Jesus by the power of his Holy Spirit. When we receive the gift of his word, the gift of God incarnate, the gift of our holy baptism, the gift of our faith, the gift of eternal life, the gift of our parish and prayers, the gift of our priest, our leaders of the church, and the gift of each other here, and the gift of his grace being imparted daily in our lives. The gift of Jesus was given freely and for all because God gives us just what we need. So won't you join me today? We give thanks to God for his gifts to us today and every day. Shortly when I finish this message, we will stand together and we will confess our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. Today, I want you to hang on to every word and consider what we are confessing. Your homework this week is to reread the Creed and meditate on it. Think of the gifts from God, your baptism, your faith, Jesus Christ, Mary, Joseph, Christ's suffering and death on the cross, his descent into hell to be victorious over death and the devil, his ascension, his resurrection, and our eternal life. My friends, the gift of Christmas just keeps giving and giving and giving. So it begs me to ask you this question today. So who will you pass this gift on to? This is a life-transforming gift. This gift is to be regifted again and again. Christmas is never over for us. The true gift of Christmas is at the core of the gift. His arms are open wide to receive you today, tomorrow, and for an eternity. That message is proudly preached in this parish every Sunday. And yet that message is not old, but it is fresh and new each time we hear it. May the gift of Christmas be in you. May the gift of Christmas be with you. And may the gift of Christmas be shared by you. Take a little time each day to think about all the gifts in your life from God. Think about God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. <coughs> Take a little time to think about God the Son walking on this same earth we walk and subject to the same frail body that we can. In the time that you devote to God each day, and it doesn't have to be a great length of time, smile. Think about your gift. From his Jesus fullness, we have received grace above grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Make a little time 
each day to consider Christmas as your miracle. And then there will be a little Christmas in each day of 2019. May the Christ child of Christmas, our Savior, our King, our Lord, be and remain with you now and forevermore. And all of God's people, we join together and we say, Amen. Amen. A blessed